One of the first things you do when you prepare to go on vacation is pack your camera. Well, I thought it'd be interesting to talk to a photographer who's taken pictures all over the world. He has a travel photography column in both Signature Magazine and in Popular Photography Magazine. His name is Carl Purcell. Carl, what kind of a photographer would you consider yourself to be? Well, basically, my main work, Mike, is in the field of travel photography. Uh, I specialize in it because I like to travel, you know. <laughs> uh, you can't uh, help but enjoy traveling, and uh, I decided some years ago to specialize in that field. Uh, I've been all together to probably about 80 countries and over 3 million miles, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Let's have some advice on what the average traveler should think about as far as camera equipment goes. I would essentially recommend that most people uh, traveling carry zoom lenses, because that way you can carry three lenses instead of ten and be able to do the same, same work with it. How would you define travel photography? Well, basically, most photography today is travel photography, because maybe in your hometown, that's someplace else to somebody else. Uh, uh, any location is a travel picture. Uh, but most of us think of travel uh, photography in terms of exotic destinations. And uh, uh, it's true that when you're traveling to some faraway country, you want to be able to bring back something that's going to say something about that particular place, that destination. And you look for those little things that make a statement about the country. Maybe it's the people, maybe it's the architecture, the clothes that people wear. Uh, uh, little things that are reflecting the culture of that country. How important is it to get people in our photographs and how would you suggest to us the easiest way to get people in in other lands to cooperate? Well, first of all, you have to overcome your, your natural tendency to be uh, a little shy and self-conscious about going up to strangers. Uh, people like to have their pictures taken in most places and if you approach them in a friendly and open manner you'll probably be able to get their cooperation. Don't hesitate to ask to get a picture. Don't hesitate to take a candid picture of a person. Uh, the thing is that you must be willing to try. And if you do that, you'll be able to break the people barrier. How can we get the flavor of a country without shooting cliche pictures? Well, you have to be willing to uh, spend some time thinking about the pictures that you're gonna take. Uh, essentially, you know, pictures are not taken with cameras. They're taken in the head. And it's the intellect uh, and the eye of the photographer that makes the difference. You want to look at a new country and select those things that are going to make the, the most powerful pictures. Again, avoid the cliches. Uh, uh, at least avoid shooting the cliche, cliche subjects in a, in a cliche way. Uh, if you're going to photograph the Eiffel Tower, look for a really different angle, something that is creative in the picture. Carl, you've created hundreds of thousands of images, and I see you brought along a few for us to look at. And I know each one has a story behind it, and I'd sure be interested to hear that. Well, I think the, the first picture that I started out here with was one that I wanted to show the importance of being close when photographing people. Now, most people get too far back when they're taking pictures of people. You really get much more dramatic impact if you move in close. In this picture of the woman with the parrot, I moved in just as close as my camera would allow me to focus. And she was perfectly aware of the fact that I was taking the picture and willing to cooperate. And I see you took a trip to Luzon, the Philippines. Again, another close-up picture, a picture of a young man, a rice farmer in the Philippines. But there I used a dash of color. He had that red scarf under his hat. And you know, it just added that, that spark of life to the picture. Carl, you always have to keep your eyes open when you're shooting, don't you? Especially in a foreign country. There's a very interesting shot here. Yes, that little uh, uh, boy was sitting in the marketplace uh, in Ecuador, and uh, he was down below, and I almost didn't see him. I looked down, and there he was with those red peppers. Made a very nice composition. Carl, I'm interested in the exotic places you've visited, and I know here in Managua, Nicaragua, an earthquake had just occurred. Uh, the picture of the uh, billboard in the background with Santa Claus drinking a Coca-Cola seemed ironical in a uh, tropical country. <laughs> certainly did. And then you go from the tropics to London. Yes, this was about Christmas time in London in Green Park. And uh, I found it a very uh, moody shot. Uh, uh, and I looked for the composition of the little path going through the, the park and the, and the dark trunks of the trees. 
Did this zebra shot come from your uh, yearly tours to uh, Africa that I know you, you take? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I take a field seminar of, of photographers to Africa each year, and uh, I try to usually do it during the great animal migration, when the animals are moving across the Serengeti. And that was a wildebeest and zebra during the migration. I'm not bored by your photography, but it looks like Mr. Lion could have used a nap during it. <laughs> uh, the male lion is, uh, gets a chance to relax all the time. It's the female uh, lions that do the hunting. And I see another couple of folks here, what, uh, coming out of the top of a car. Yeah, most of the safari vehicles today are designed so that the roof opens up. And uh, you can take your pictures out of the top as well as shooting them out of the window. You have almost a free, free range of picture-taking possibilities. And tell us about this bird in the next shot. Well, uh, that is a Goliath heron at the North Kenya Safari Club who posed happily for everybody. And I was fortunate enough to get him with his mouth open with a fly on the end of his tongue. And Carl, let's finish up with this image. It's so beautiful. Well, you know, those sunsets in Africa are spectacular, and I just can't wait to go back on my next safari. Well, I tell you, I feel like I've just had a world tour, and I also feel like I've learned a lot about travel photography, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate that, Carl. Well, Mike, you know, this is a cruise ship, so why don't we take our camera and go out and cruise for a while? I'll take you up on that. So when we come back, we'll go out on deck of the Song of America to take some travel pictures with Carl Purcell. Please stay with us. <laughs> 